was Jesus based on the Sumerian god Tammuz. Several mysticists allege that Jesus never existed, and many of the elements of his life were borrowed from an earlier deity named Tammuz. The argument is, Tammuz was born in Bethlehem, just like Jesus. He was called a shepherd and tended flocks of dead souls in the afterlife. He wore a crown of thorns made of myrrh. He was annually sacrificed, similar to how Jesus was sacrificed for all mankind. He died and was later resurrected. He was called the Anointed One, Only Begotten Son, Savior of the World, and a Healer. So these are the claims about Tammuz that are used to try and establish that elements of the life of Jesus were borrowed from his myths. However, despite what Jesus mysticists say, most of this is nonsense, with a few exceptions, and even those do not accurately match up. First, I can find no claim that Tammuz was born in Bethlehem. The best I can find is Saint Jerome, later saying pagan shrines were set up in Bethlehem after the Jewish wars. But this was done by the Romans to wipe out the Jewish religion and history. There is no evidence these shrines were there prior to this, or that anyone thought Tammuz was born at Bethlehem prior to Jesus' birth. Tammuz was called shepherd, but only because he was a literal shepherd. Jesus isn't a literal shepherd, but a metaphorical shepherd for his people. In ancient societies that depended on pastoral ways of life, this was pretty common. For example, the pharaoh of Egypt was often considered a shepherd over the people of Egypt. It is also a common metaphor in the Old Testament to refer to a ruler or the Lord watching over his people. So this is probably why Jesus is also metaphorically called a shepherd, because it's used in the Old Testament. It's probably not borrowed from a competing pagan deity that was a literal shepherd. As for tending to dead souls in the afterlife, Stephen Langdon says, We should expect that the Babylonians would regard Tammuz as the god who passed judgment on the souls of the dead. He it was who guarded the tree of life in the land where all the shades were posed. But the evidence for this doctrine is meager. In any case, not Tammuz, but the permanent lord of the land of the dead, Nergal, was the judge of those that died. I cannot find a source to confirm this next one, so it appears to have no evidence whatsoever. And this next one is very misleading. Tammuz wasn't sacrificed in a similar fashion of how Christians understand Jesus' sacrifice for humanity. Langdon says, In this doctrine, there seems to be no reference to immortality or deliverance from eternal sleep in Sheol. The Babylonians had no such hope. When liturgies represent the people lamenting for their savior or their healer, they have not those spiritual doctrines which these words convey in Christian doctrine. He is called the healer only in the sense that all life depended upon his sacrifice and especially upon his return from hell. So this would be like saying Mother Teresa didn't exist and was copied from Jesus because it was said she sacrificed her time to help children. The connotations of both scenarios regarding what is being sacrificed is not the same. The same logic applies to Tammuz, and vague word association is not an argument, there is a parallel. For the same reason, this next alleged parallel doesn't work either. First, in the legends, Tammuz died when he was killed by raiders from the netherworld. Tammuz is then said to return to life in conjunction with the cycles of vegetation. But the scholar Mark Smith is hesitant to say resurrection is the proper term for what is happening here, and it could actually be an astralization, which is to be brought up to dwell among the stars. Smith also notes there is no known ritual text that celebrates his return to the land of the living. The truth is, as Smith states, the manner in how Tammuz returns from the underworld is unknown. There is hardly sufficient evidence to say this was a resurrection in the Jewish sense of the word, where a human dies, returns to life in their own body as a new immortal being. Scholars believe that the death and return of Tammuz was meant to represent the birth and death cycle of vegetation. This is not a parallel to Jesus in Christian theology, unless we force each of these concepts into a vague generalization and ignore specific meanings within both cultures. So Tammuz's return to life? 
doesn't necessarily compare to Jesus' resurrection. There is no evidence Tammuz was called the Anointed One, or that he was called the Begotten Son. There is one place where he is called the Faithful Son, but he is the Faithful Son of the Fresh Water, which comes from the earth. He was also never called Savior of the World. He was called a Savior and a Healer, but not in the context of Jesus' healing and salvation. Remember, Tammuz healed medically. Langdon reminds us every deity, male or female, possessed this power, so that this attribute of healing is not confined to Tammuz. The saving that Tammuz did was from starvation, since his death and return were connected to the vegetation cycles. So it appears mysticists are finding vague generalizations and ignoring what these terms and ideas meant in these different cultures and religions. You can make anything match if you just change the meaning and force vague word associations to be parallels. The reality is, there is no evidence Jesus was just a myth based on Tammuz.